Hi Aquarius, Rosemary from Rosemary Astrology and welcome to your June 2024 Astrology. So I want to talk briefly about Pluto because Pluto is going to be moving through your sign for the next 20 years. I do have a video on that on my channel. Also, uh, I delve into not only what Pluto is about, but what the sign of Aquarius is about. So that would be particularly interesting for you. But Pluto stationed retrograde on May 2nd. When a planet stations retrograde, it exerts a lot of energy because it's as if from our vantage point on Earth, it is stopping in its tracks and beginning to back up. So again, trying to show us what he is here to do on a collective level and on an individual level, particular for you as it is through your sign. And if you are uh, born, obviously I can't see everyone's chart, but if you are born, on the first days of Aquarius season. So from January 20th, um, 21st, 22nd, I'll say 23, 24, even maybe a little bit into the 25th of January. Is that right? Yes, the 25th of January. Um, Pluto's really, really grinding down uh, on the first degrees and very close, if not on your sun. And of course, look at your chart if you have anything else at those degrees. If you're rising, is at those first degrees, somewhere between about zero and four or five degrees. Pluto is really, really moving over that. Eventually, of course, it's going to concern the, the other degrees of your sign. And we'll talk a little bit about Pluto after as well because he'll be making some aspects to Mars and Jupiter. There is a lot of energy this month in your fifth house in the fellow air sign Gemini. This is everything to do. I call it the house of individual self-expression. It is um, romance. It's sex as well. It's our creative pursuit. So whatever we do as a pastime, as a hobby for fun, it is um, entertainment also. So in that aspect, what we do for fun or uh, to divert ourselves, you know, just as a, as a form of um, amusement, or as I said, entertainment, it has everything to do with children, be they your children or other uh, significant children in your life. And it doesn't necessarily mean young children. They can be adults, but there's that idea of the younger generation. So I sometimes say uh, grandchildren, nieces and nephews, stepchildren. Um, just if you are, you know, in a job or you have other children, uh, as I said, again, uh, the idea of a younger generation. So don't just necessarily think, you know, toddlers and uh, preschoolers, but people who are one generation younger than you or two generations that you are close to. It's also gambling and speculation as well. Just throwing that in the idea of a risk taking, but Jupiter arrived on the 25th of May, will be there for one year. I did do a video on that. You have the sun there, Venus, Mercury, and a new moon. So Jupiter arrived preceded by these three planets, sort of, I kept saying an entourage or, um, you know, heralding his arrival type of thing. This continues to the 17th when Mercury and Venus will leave and the 20th, the sun will leave. So there's a lot of energy and focus there getting as if Jupiter needs this, but getting Jupiter off to an even bigger start. So your attention is really focused there. Possibility of romance, of course, when Venus transits through our fifth house or, you know, uh, helping a developing romance flourish even more. Mercury has you very communicative. You have lots of thoughts and ideas. So maybe it is something that pertains to entertainment. Maybe it's something that pertains to a creative pursuit or a pastime of some sort. Maybe it has something to do with children. And of course, the new moon there can just mark, you know, a turning point or a new beginning of some sort. The new moon is on the 6th at 18 degrees of Gemini. And remember, ever since Jupiter has arrived and until the 12th of June, he's been a trining Pluto in your sign. So quite a flowing energy. It's been giving us the feeling of Whatever we want to do there, we can really take it on. You know, I say Jupiter in and of himself is more than enough. The most beneficial planet in astrology, a lot of faith, optimism, hope, joviality. The Romans called Jupiter Jove, where we get the word joviality, the idea of just confidence and expansion and ability to find solutions and opportunities, but getting just this feeling of really being able to take control, making it happen, you know, 
very strong energy to achieve and a lot of optimism as well. So when the new moon shows up on the 6th, you know, you might be really resolving to do something new or do something differently, or it can just be a change of mindset or a new way of approaching things. Now, as I said, by the 17th, Venus and Mercury move into your sixth house, Oops. followed by the sun. Ugh. Everything is all bunched up here. Followed by the sun on the 20th and Venus and Mercury together. First of all, your sixth house is work, both paid and unpaid. That idea of where we are of service to others, it is co-workers. It can be your academic workload. It can be volunteer work if that concerns you. This is also, you know, routines, lifestyle, or physical health. So bad habits, uh, good habits, again, our routine, you know, sort of what we do on a regular basis. Venus and Mercury arriving together. Mercury, remember, is all your communications. If there's something you have to ask for at work or change, or, you know, maybe you're uh, going to an interview or you're trying out for a particular uh, project or a particular promotion, not only does Mercury make you very a uh, quick thinker and a uh, great communicator, but whatever you say is under that aura of Venus's charm and diplomacy. So really good to have them together here. At the same time, you know, Venus in our sixth house can have us really being the person that everyone wants to, you know, be around, be uh, in contact with this idea with Venus of a lot of relating and being able to, um, you know, rally people around something or gather people around something. It can also mark a workplace romance as well with Venus there. The sun is just adding focus to that also. So, you know, maybe you are thinking, it's like your yearly check-in. So you're thinking, you know, is this living up to my expectations. What about all the other jobs and duties you have? You know, if you are a full-time parent, that's an example of unpaid employment. Or if you have responsibilities to an elderly parent or an elderly relative, you know, that's another um, idea of jobs and duties you have. You know, are, are there, um, you know, too many demands maybe? Uh, can I streamline this? Can I make it better? Is there something I have to discuss with someone in this and this really good time to do so, as I said, with Venus and Mercury conjunct, you know, is there maybe something I have to sort of, you know, uh, tweak and refine or change up a little bit if you need the abilities of a diplomat and a, a good negotiator, definitely wonderful, especially as Venus and Mercury are very, very close together. Upon their arrival, Mercury moves very, very fast. So by the 18th, 19th, they'll be um, out of orb of one another, but so good you'll have them both, you know, in that same sign. Now on the 9th, Mars will leave his home sign of Aries and move into your fourth house of home and family. Uh, this is the wonderful part. This is the dicier part, Aquarius. He's going to square Pluto sitting in your sign from the 9th to the 15th. Remember, Mars, the opposite of Venus, if you've watched my other videos, you've heard me say this, Mars, very driven, very focused, wants to get things done, can be confrontational, can be argumentative. This is um, home and family, so family of origin, family of choice, the physical place you live, your homeland, your region. And they're squaring each other. They're two, I will say, somewhat harsh planets. Pluto, of course, all about power and control. What isn't working anymore, you know, showing us the, the underside or the bad side. And, and he will be doing that for 20 years in your sign. Um, Mars, very focused, very headstrong. Mars likes to win. Mars can be very competitive. And as I said, the first and the fourth naturally sit square to each other as self and family. So you can see where friction can come in. You know, is this you wanting more power and control over yourself? This is very much our individuality, our, our um, personality, you know, even our physical appearance are truly our self. And this is, of course, family. So you can see where this could friction, you know, is there something you want to change uh, to a family dynamic? Perhaps you want to move, maybe uh, change house, change residence. Maybe you want to move somewhere really completely different, you know, another city or another area. And this Mars Pluto square, remember, God of the underworld in mythology, God of war in mythology. There's a do or die, you know, Mars will want to win at all costs, come out on top at all costs. You know, there can be power plays. There's a lot of ambition with Mars. A lot of risk taking. Mars is a risk taker more than ever. So there's a definitely an idea of 
perhaps going to extremes. I was saying in the other videos, if this comes to an ultimatum, uh, you know, do this or else, Mars is going to choose the or else. And this sometimes plays out in terms of who we are and what doesn't fit anymore with a family tradition or a family pattern. That's also something, you know, we find in the fourth house and the way things are done in this family or the, the things that aren't done in this family. And this is our own individual self. So, you know, maybe there's an idea of breaking away from that. As I said, something to do with a family dynamic perhaps as well. You know, maybe an idea of pulling away also. So, you know, just do know it lasts a week. Of course, I always say it's not a light switch, so it doesn't automatically start happening on the 9th and then completely stop on the 15th. It'll build a bit before and die down after, but do be aware of that as well. At the end of the month, there is going to be a full moon in Capricorn, right across from the sun. This is more a private part of our chart. It is where we go to do inner work to get in touch with ourselves. It's our soul health or a psychological health as much as the sixth house is our physical health. You know, the full moon can highlight something, um, can make us maybe a little bit more emotional too. Maybe it is highlighting something that is going on with us. Often this play back and forth, you know, in opposition, always a question of finding balance is, you know, where um, a lot of energy is going to the detriment of another area. And usually there's a lot of energy going on here in terms of our work, in terms of where we're showing up for others. And you do have a lot of energy and focus there. So, you know, not only are you perhaps doing a lot of things, interacting a lot, but you're also being solicited more, especially with Venus there, people are drawn to us. At the same time, you know, the full moon might be highlighting a need to, you know, take a break, just, you know, be a little more quiet and see what you're really thinking. Um, now, I always say in our heart of hearts or, you know, what we are truly thinking without all this external, you know, brouhaha or requests or demands or sometimes, you know, just, I'll say it, an influence, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, at work, there's a lot of demands and we're, we're praised for what we do. And of course, we're enjoying it. But then, you know, sometimes when we think to ourselves, wow, maybe I am putting up too much energy there, putting too much time there. And I need to pull back a bit, you know, as, as wonderful as it is, I just uh, need a little more time for myself type of thing. I always say we're more emotional on the full moon and do let me give you the date for that. It's the 21st at one degree of Capricorn. In Capricorn, sometimes we'll tend to self-censor censor a little bit because Capricorn is very serious, very stoic. So do let yourself think those thoughts. Sometimes, you know, there's places we don't want to go here in the 12th house in the subconscious or in the inner self, or we're sort of too um, fearful of what we'll find, or we don't really want to hear our own answer do let yourself uh, do that exploration. And it's just you with yourself, right? It's above the horizon. Others can suspect something is happening or notice a difference, but ultimately, you know, it's just uh, you with yourself. There's a bit of a sense of isolation with the 12th house. So it's sort of a cut off, as I said, because it's us doing our own inner work. And also just a reminder, Saturn stations, retrograde Saturn is your traditional ruler stations retrograde on the 29th so it's going to join Pluto will be followed by other planets eventually I have a video on Saturn and Pisces he is about at 19 degrees will move back to about 12 degrees so just continuing his trek through Pisces sort of um I keep saying shaping up what Neptune is doing Neptune is very strong as the modern ruler of Pisces. This is your wealth and income, so your resources, things you possess as much as the eighth house is what is shared with others. And if that has been blurry, that's very much Neptune. Neptune is great for spiritual work, compassion, uh, intuitive downloads, insight, but not so great maybe as the planet we want moving through our money house. So if things have been, you know, that money slipping through our fingers like water type of thing or, uh, you know, you can't seem to get a clear hold on your, your finances or your resources, Saturn is really going to be adding structure to that. As much as Neptune is no boundaries and compassion, Saturn is a lot of boundaries and structure. So again, might be sending you a message of what he is uh, here to do in your second house. He's been there since March of 2023 and he'll be there until about 2025. So it's about a two and a half year trek through each uh, sign with Saturn. 
So lovely, Aquarius. That is everything I wanted to tell you for June. Thank you so much for joining me. Drop me a comment. Tell me if any of this resonates with you. Have a wonderful month and I will see you on the next one.